Yo, what is up, guys? So for today, we're gonna be talking about Destiny 2. Finally, I know you guys have seen a lot of other content that that's not that's not Destiny 2 related, but if you have watched those videos, I really much appreciate it. If you haven't, uh, check them out. They would really help me out because uh, I'm trying to do other things besides Destiny 2 because just there's nothing to do for Destiny 2 currently at the moment for me. But let's talk about what's happening in the TWAB. So I'm just gonna go through the stuff that I actually care about. So. Iron Futures, it's almost time for the final Iron Banners uh, Season of the Chosen. This will be your last opportunity to complete the Iron Sharpens Iron Season Null Challenge. So get in there and smash some heads. If you are also trying to get your power to 1325 for Grandmaster Nightfalls, don't forget the four pinnacle powered weekly bounties that Saladin offers. So before we go, we'd like to take a moment to look for forward in time season of redacted is coming in a few short weeks and saladin has a few new items up his sleeve for you to earn when the new season begins in may so we get two returning weapons and we get two new weapons unfortunately one of them is an lmg which is very very unfortunate i would have much preferred literally anything else than a lmg but hopefully the stack the perks are really stacked for it and then we get a shotgun, which looks interesting. I, uh, it's really hard to say. I think I would have much preferred a primary over literally any of these two, but I like the weapon designs. They look really cool. And I'm gonna judge them when they come out or at least until we see the perks and what archetypes they are. Cause it's unfair to judge them right now, but I will say that I'm kind of disappointed cause I would have loved to see like a hand cannon, a, not scout rifle not mm, a, a smg would have been fire like i said it would it would have just been cool if they gave us all the weapons but i understand what they're trying to do they probably made a full uh list of weapons and they're gonna trickle it down over time because not only are we getting new weapons but we're also looking I'll read it right now looking even further out we're planning on new armor for iron banner these sets won't appear for a few seasons but we have heard your desire for some new digs once we have more information we'll let you know until then we hope you enjoy the new weapons so i i'm happy we're getting new armor it's just unfortunate that we won't see it for a few more for for a few more seasons because i like it's really hard for me to judge Iron Banner because it's not something like, it's not like a season. Iron Banner is like forever. We always have an Iron Banner. So I would love to see new ar new armor, like not each season, but every other season would be good. Like season of the chosen, we get new armor, right? And then the next season, it's still the same armor. And then the season after that, it's a new armor. I would, I would be okay with that. But like, if they're going to make a new armor for like a year, that's not going to cut it. Like, I don't think that's not, that's not good. I will, I do understand people could probably tell me, well, what about, what about, uh, trials? I, I think trials is a dying playlist. And if they don't do something about it soon, it's gonna die. Iron Banner, I think, is much healthier than Trials. Trials is just horrid, in my opinion, but whatever. So, new weapons, good. Hopefully we get a good SMG archetype. Hopefully we get a good uh, sniper. I want I want to see more, but it's an, I just, I don't, I, I can't get excited for an LMG and a shotgun, depending where it is, because if it's an aggressive frame shotgun, then it'll be good. And if it's an aggressive frame on like the energy or the, it doesn't really matter because there's already shotguns that are like pretty much viable on each of those slots. For, so that's why I'm just kind of like, it, you have to be good. You have to be good because the next one, the never ending search for balance. Basically all this is saying that the shotguns are gonna get nerfed, but let's read on. Prepping for Season of Redacted, we have a few changes that will be coming to this Destiny Sandbox. This week we'll be focusing on things that are hot, so to speak, weapon, weapons and archetypes that need to be tuned in order to create breathing room for other aspects of, des of the Destiny Sandbox to shine. We're also planning quite a few buffs to underused perks, linear fusion rifles, and more. Current plan is to cover perk and weapon buffs in an upcoming tab towards the end of April once they've they're solidified. But we want to get this information out earlier than normal to keep you all informed. Without further ado, weapons weapons feature lead Chris Proctor is here once again to lay out our goals with these upcoming changes and give you the nitty gritty details. So 
Weapon archetypes, aggressive 120 hand cannons are very dominant in PvP. We received enough feedback that we want to rein them back in a bit without completely taking away their range benefits. These weapons will not have a damage and aim assist fall off distance reduced by two between two and four meters based on the range stat. This roughly halves the range buff they received in Beyond Light. I think this is a good change. 120s are a little too too strong right now, and they do need to be rail, rail, railed back a little bit. It's unfortunate because in a perfect world, 120s would have the biggest range, and like 140s would have like the shortest range but would shoot faster. It's it that's just not how that works, and it's unfortunate. But I still want 120s to have some sort of range benefit that outperforms like the 120s or the 150s like other archetypes essentially because they are the slowest vortex frame swords with falling guillotine now viable forever we need to adjust it a little as its damage output is flat out higher than any other legendary swords with this change we we will we we allow it to keep its high damage output but are reducing its full reserve damage output by reducing the number of heavy attacks you'll be able to perform full energy heavy attack ammo cost increase from four to six that's that's a lot and chip damage certain weapons swords and bastion bypass shields by varying amounts which has caused numerous issues with stasis in case enemies encounter mechanics and other content we have removed chip damage from swords and bastion interesting so this is like the part where people might lose their mind a little considering there's two uh, nerfs that are happening quick draw this weapon is intended to provide faster swap speed but is also passively buffs handling by 100 or 100 plus 100 this completely negates the downside of using low handling weapons such as aggressive shotguns sniper rifles and hand cannons which isn't something we want to encourage those weapons should have downsides and working around those com uh those completely via a perk isn't healthy we don't think allowing a fast swap to sh to the shotgun subfamily with the highest one kill one hit kill range is great either the handling bonus is now removed one second after switching to this weapon or upon aiming down sights. Replace quick draw with surplus on new and existing drops of Felwinter's Alliance Astral Horizon. So I'm pretty happy with this change. I will tell you guys right now, I'm not a quick draw enthusiast. Like I don't have quick draw on a lot of weapons and the weapons I do have, I'm just kind of like, I can live without this honestly. So the fact that uh, Astral Horizon does not have quick draw anymore. And even if you have a, a quick draw uh, slot on it, it's going to get uh, replaced with surplus. Same thing with Felwinter's Lie. I'm pretty much happy because now I'm just probably going to roll with slide shot and opening shot. I think that's a, a roll that I'm going to like a lot more. For the Astral Horizon, I actually have Threat Detector and Elemental Capacitor, which is like my poor man's way of having quick draw because threat detector obviously when you get close to an enemy enemies your handling gets boosted by a lot and with elemental capacitor if you have what is it arc i believe you get plus 45 handling already and this one already has like 85 handling so for me this is like completely perfect it's already boosting all of my handling all the way up so for me this is like my poor man's version of just having quick draw and hopefully no one ever finds out because i'm i love this this is like really good so quick draw unfortunately is nerfed and i don't know how the community will take it but let's continue on frenzy this perk has extremely high up uptime in pve to the point where it's clearly a better choice than most other damage perks we like the high uptime and want to preserve that but want to want it to award less damage and harder to activate damage perks reduced bonus damage from 20 percent to 15 percent i don't care i don't i don't use frenzy that much i to be fair i'm not playing the game currently but even when i was i was not using frenzy i just don't really care too much about frenzy i know it's a really good perk but i just didn't really give two shits about it and reserve bursts now increases magazine size in addition to its other effects reduce full battery bonus damage from 33% to 25%. Upcoming content requires revisiting the power level of a damage perk that can be activated simply by having a full magazine. Wink, wink, nudge. I don't. Reserve burst. Is this the the one for from that one from that one weapon? I forget. It's 
uh, the fusion rifle. If it is that one, that's going to be cool if it's coming back. Because that was a, a pinnacle perk, if I remember correctly. So that's going to be cool. But let's go to exotics. The lament is basically getting reduced damage of revved heavy attack by approximately 16%. Note that the lament retains standard anti-barrier despite removing chip damage. And Bastion is intrinsically staggering unstoppable champions now and increased the spread angle by 13%. With all these changes, we will continue to watch how they play once they are in the wild and we'll look for further adjustments based on our observations and player feedback. So that's pretty much your TWAB. I, like, there's other stuff here and there, but I do not give two shits about it. Uh, all I care about is the fact that we're getting new stuff for Iron Banner now. Thank God it's been... It's been it's been forever since we've gotten anything for Iron Banner, and I'm happy that we're finally getting something, because best believe, I was, <sighs> I've been saying forever that the fact that we haven't gotten anything new for Iron Banner is like a fucking travesty, because Iron Banner used to be the place where you get good weapons and good armor sets, and it hasn't been that in a few years now. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm excited for the next season, mostly because there's just a bunch of stuff happening next season. A lot of quality of life improvements and transmog. But the fact that we're getting new armor sets or not this, not next season, but we're getting a new weapons or new weapons for Iron Banner is dope. Again, depending on what archetypes they are, it could be good or bad. Uh, the fact that the strongest shotguns in the game are getting nerfed pretty hard well i mean i wouldn't say they're getting nerfed it directly it's more quick draws getting nerfed i think it's pretty cool i wonder how quick draw will react to like weapons that are not shotguns because i have a few quick draw rolls that i kind of want to see how that would roll out because currently i have quick draw on a lot of 120s and i just don't want them to feel like shit because I got an igneous hammer with quick draw and snapshot sights, and if it if it, if it feels bad, I'm gonna get a little sad. But it's okay because I actually have an igneous hammer with outlaw and celerity, and if I remember correctly, they're actually bumping something for celerity next season. So we'll see what's happening. Uh, I'll have some more videos for Destiny 2 later, but currently I have other plans. Like I said, Outriders, I'm doing Outriders, I'm doing uh, Valheim. I haven't posted it yet, but I already have a video uh, done and I'm just waiting for it to go up. I have a lot of stuff planned and it's a little tiring because I don't have that much time in the world, but I will try to prioritize more Destiny 2 because I know that's why you guys have subscribed to my channel. It's mostly for the Destiny 2 content. But if you guys do watch my other content and like it, I would very much appreciate it. And be safe, guys. The world's going crazy. And I will see you guys later.